are planning for full mouth rehabilitation for this patient. A lot of missing tooth on upper posteriors, lower periodontal not stable. Here they might have got supraerupted cervical fraction. This tooth got supraerupted. Long term missing tooth. Anterior chewing pattern, right? So the patient must be chewing only with the anterior tooth. There is no molar contact. Okay, so we are planning for full mouth rehab. So fanning out now, the lower inches and upper inches are slightly proclined. <coughs> yeah, it is severe attrition here, exposing the dentine because of you know, heavy contact here. Even the upper incisors, they might be treated here. See, here. the patient has not got any treatment so far, right? Mm. So all the teeth we extracted, they fell itself. Huh? Mm. Okay. So we'll plan for first and lower. Comparatively, the right side distal mandible is a more resolved than the left side. Can you see? Mm. From the this is the canal. Mm. From the canal height is more on the left side. So the left side will be less challenging than the right side. So the right side will be the more challenging. In the six area, there is a lot of uh, bone loss. Six is the key area. So definitely, you know, it is difficult to place implant in the six. So we have to use the seven area, right? Here, this is six or seven. We don't know, right? This may be the canine, first premolar, second premolar. Maybe this is a second premolar. This is canine. First premolar, second premolar, one molar. So this is the second, second mostly this is the second molar. So just in front of the second molar we have to place the one implant. Or in the mesial root of or distal root of seven we can plan. Here also around the root there is severe bone resorption. You can see the mental foramen here, right? Both side, if you see, the mental foramen is uh, distal to second premolar, which is quite unusual. Usually, it will be between first and second uh, molar, sorry, second premolar. Mm. So, we will analyze the key strategic position for implant placement. First, we will sort out the right mandible where it is more resorbed. First, we will see the mesial root. So here it is very much unfavorable, right? It is unfavorable in the mesial root, distal root also. It is unfavorable. But if you see in the mesial root area, the myeloid ridge is not started. But in the distal root, myeloid ridge has started. Very prominent myeloid ridge. Whenever you see very prominent myeloid ridge, that is a good sign. You can place an implant like this. See till the inferior alveolar canal there is loss. Right? So our plan is to place implant distal to 6. This is the distal to 6 defect area. So there is a lot of granulation tissue close to the canal. There might be some feeder vessel from the canal directly into the six, right? I guess this may not be six. This might be seven, right? This, it might have been migrated, and rotated and migrated. Okay. So. So after extraction definitely we have to do a proper cure touch and there will be bleeding we need a bone wax for backup and have we prescribed mouthwashes antibiotics from today so you have to check those things if not you have to start from at least today actually there is one mouthwash available with along with the astringent along with the you know, paint content it will be more effective you know, than regular mouthwash so this is the seven area. Okay, bone quality is very good, right? Lingual cortical very good. The only trouble is 
height the height is not sufficient so from the crest the height is 8 mm just on the top of the nerve so can you place it no so but you can place a 6 till here it comes 8 no some separate distance is there till 8 we can place 8 if we do little bit closer to the lingually and if you tilt lingually and if you perforate the uh, lingual cortical plane you can place a little bit longer implant up to 2 lemon but it is a technique sensitive procedure right if you come very close laterally you will damage the nerve if you go close to the lingual side lingually the plate will be very thin during breaking during bending the lingual plate will break so how to solve this issue now going very close to the lingual plate is one common mistake mm. then coming very close to the nerve this mistake happens because of the overlying uh, tissue it misguides us long term edentulousness the lingual tissue will be very much thicker so we will drill very close to the lingual side so anyhow what we will do is we will do incision here anyhow you are going to do cure it here just another one centimeter incision distally we can expose the um, no, crystal part from here to here right and we can drill but you can you know, do without flap also, opening the flap also. The experience you can do. Otherwise, what you can do is you can do straight. Don't plan for any lingual cutting. Mm -hmm. Plan for a shorter implant. 8 mm also will work fine. But you have to do a little bit closer to the lingual side. Not from no buckle. So both options are there. Mm -hmm. So it's the buckle plate. Thinner than the lingual plate. Yes. See here it is a resolved case. Mm. When the tooth is there, it is the situation is different. Mm. When the tooth is there, as you told, the buccal plate will be very much thin. Why not Yeah, yeah, you can you, you this side. Ah, yeah, you can but the abutment will be very much in a unfavorable position. Like how we are engaging. Yeah, like this. Arms. Yes. So why not buccal cortical engagement? So doing drilling is quite easy. Mm. There is no problem in it. Mm. But doing bending is very difficult. Mm. Doing bending is very difficult. Especially if you tilt uh, no, anteriorly. This is a tilt. Mostly this is a tilt now. Mm. So here you have to bend this abutment both buccally and distally. Which is very very challenging. If we are going for a screw retained option, mm. then you can do it. Then this is not a difficult problem. We did one case like that recently. Mm. Okay. But for single piece bending, if you are planning for bending, buckle engagement you can do, but bending no, it will be a headache. Mm. So we will plan for another. Oh, sorry. We will pause plant for another implant. So, what we will do? We will convert this one into lingual cortical. Up to 10 mm or around 10 mm, we can place. We will place, try to place one more implant. Mostly, it may go till no 8 region. Mm -hmm. Here also, you have to go for a lingual cortical only. Okay either basal design or compressive design. If you are doing basal design, it will be around 12, right? 12 or 14. Or if you are planning for compressive, it will be around 10. If you are placing axially, then it is very much unfavorable, right? Or you can place a 6 mm implant, a very short implant, right? Some brands 6 mm implant is available that you can place. Okay, it's only additional implant. Mm -hmm. huh? 
Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Like no, it won't affect. The pterygoid is more distal than the zentral. But the bar will extend through the pterygoid. But no issues. Mm-hmm. We can. The prosthetic space is very good. Mm-hmm. There is severe resorption, no? Mm-hmm. Only in uh, no prosthetic space is not there. You will get such kind of a problem. Or if the tuberosity has been supra erupted, mm-hmm. then the problem of upper pterygoid eating the lower is a problem. Mm-hmm. But upper also has gone up. Mm-hmm. The lower also has gone down. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so there is so much of inter um arch uh, yeah inter arch distance so the upper pterygoid eating the uh, lower eight is not a problem mm-hmm. just a bit of it but even if it eats uh, you don't have to give tooth over the seven implant mm-hmm. you can leave it open or you can just give coping only mm-hmm. so coming to four Sorry, five. It is better we place the implant in five. Why? Yes, distance. otherwise the implant implant distance will be more. Uh, but is is it favorable? We don't know. Okay, we'll plan straight first. Yeah, if we plan straight, it goes straight into the uh, canal. so what we will do is we will tilt it easily starting from 5 the drawback is crustally it is close to the defect area mm-hmm. that is the one disadvantage right this is the defect area it is closer so we will start we will tilt easily we will angle it easily even if you angle it easily the canal is somewhat uh, closer only So what you can do is you can start the drilling from between four and five. Hmm. We start the drilling from between four and five, and we will plan straight. Actually, the loop comes anteriorly, right? It is not the metal round. So we will start from between. Four and five, and we will till the anterior. That is quite safe. In this way, we can now uh, proceed this, right? So, by starting the drilling from between four and five, you are you are making sure the crustal implant is in the good bone instead of the defect area, and we are avoiding the uh, loop of metal now by tilting it mesially also. See, this is a mesial loop, but mesial loop we don't have to worry much. I will tilt some more. But if you start the uh, drilling from four, there will be long interval from distance, right? Mm. That is another drawback. Otherwise, what we can do is we can do double drilling only on this side to reduce the flexibility. Mm. We'll try implant in the four regions straight. See here, the problem is the anteriorly the canal comes, right? See, this is the metal foramen, but metal foramen it extends anteriorly. Uh, sorry, the inferior alveolar canal it extends anteriorly as the incisive nerve. So we have to go through the nerve. There is no other option. Incisive nerve. Sometimes we we cannot avoid the incisive nerve when it comes like this. No, no, it is not about the mental nerve transposition. It is about the yes. anterior branch. intramedullary branch of you no know, inferior alveolar canal. Mm. It travels anterior, no, till the midline. Mm. You cannot transpose that. So here there is a good more inter implant distance. So that is why we are placing two implants here. Okay, that is why we are placing two implants here, and we can do, or we can do a symmetry and a titanium bar also. Why not? It is also one good option. Is that if you are placing cement retained titanium bar, you, here one implant is enough, right? Even six implant is enough. We need to place eight implant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Screw retained. No, uh, already upper we are going for screw retained. Mm-hmm. We have not told the patient about screw retained. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We will see. Mm-hmm. 
here the situation is quite straightforward. There is nothing. But you have to do a good amount of hardware uh, casting. So our key area is the lateral incisor. Okay. The anatomy is very much favorable. The bone quality is good. Right? There is no curvature, nothing. Just follow the apex. Okay. The only thing is they are very much proclined like a bimax, you know, the lower incisors. So you have to do a, a good alveolar plast. So we will come to the um, first premolar area. See the ridge is very thin because of long term potentialness. So definitely we have to uh, open the flap and do alveolar plast. What might have happened is, so buckley there will be a bone loss when the tooth was present, right? Mm -hmm. So the bone will be like this, but the tooth will be mobile, the buccal bone will resolve much faster than the lingual bone. So that is why the thin ridge has developed. So we will shave the um, thin part. The bone quality is very good. A tendon implant we can definitely do mm -hmm. in the first premolar ridge. So this is the anterior, maybe the anterior extension of okay, a short implant in first premolar area. Now we will plan just above the nerve, above the mental foramen. So this is the mental foramen exit now. Just, just in the mental foramen area also you can place a one now smaller diameter lingually you can go right 10 mm implant you can safely place mm -hmm. so right left side we are selecting the mental foramen area itself mm -hmm. so how many implant 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 7 implants now we will plan for the area adjacent to the so called 7 Easier to the sound. Mm, it's very unfavorable here, right? Mm. It looks like it is an ideal case for a protein concept. Hmm? Yeah, you can place, you can place. Here, no? mm. yeah, you can place a basal lingual cortical engagement. Or even, even conventional, sorry, uh, compressive also, you can place a small diameter. 3.5 or 3.75 into 10 or 8. Replacing basal density. See the soft tissue thickness is more and more here. Right? Can you see the soft tissue thickness? From here to put 4 mm soft tissue. Sir. Okay, so totally 14 mm uh, basal you can have to place. See here this implant is close here. So you have to till dist move distally. But if you move distally, um, here also you can place nothing. Even the defect area you can place a basal. Even here you can place a basal short basal. So that is the beauty of basal implant. Place a wider basal. Ah no 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 that won't work. Mm, it will crush the bone. It won't engage the bone. Why mm. Okay instead of engaging here it will just uh, crush everything. Mm. This. This bone is more than enough, 6, 3.6 into 10 meter. So just mesial to the socket of 7 or into the socket of the 7 you can place. 